Welcome to another informational video on Hampshire 4.0. Each of my videos will start with this same short section on what is Hampshire 4.0. Well, as a Hampshire 4.0 user and a licensed amateur radio operator, I look at it this way. Hampshire 4.0 is to ham radio what an advanced flight simulator is to flying. It's a simulation, but it's an incredibly realistic simulation. Hansphere 4.0 includes simulations of how the sunspots affect the ionosphere using current real sunspot numbers. It simulates the multiple paths that signals take through the atmosphere getting from one location to another. And it even simulates the behavior of different types of antennas. You use all of these things in Hampshire 4.0 as you experience an incredibly realistic simulation of ham radio. Hello, this is a quick rundown of how to use the band scanner. When you create a rig with a new band scanner on it and you start up your transceiver, this is uh, what it will look like. It will have none of the scanner band buttons lit, meaning no bands are enabled for scanning at this time. If you try to start scanning uh, just as it's set by default, it will just uh, beep at you. And the reason it beeps at you is because you're trying to tell it to scan with no bands enabled. Uh, so the way you enable bands to scan is, let's say you're wanting to uh, keep an eye on 160 meters, see if any signals show up while you're off, uh, you know, working on Facebook or whatever to where you can hear the radio but you're not actively using it. So if I just wanted to scan the 160 meter band, I could just enable that band and then start it scanning. Now what you'll notice is it mutes the static while it scans. Now notice that it did stop here on this very weak signal because that signal sometimes goes over our threshold. The threshold is set with this knob here. So if I turn this uh, threshold up like so, then it's not going to stop on that signal because uh, uh, at best that signal comes up about this strong as we saw. If we turn our, our uh, strength down a little bit then it stand a better chance of finding this signal when it uh, goes by it if there's any dits or dies happening at the time. So that's the scanning of a single band with one weak signal on it in manual antenna mode which means it's going to use whatever antenna I currently have selected. So if I switch the cardioid here on 160 meters, it's, I didn't disable scanning or anything, and now you can see that the signal's starting to pick up a little bit in strength because I'm using an antenna pointed toward it. Uh, so it's whatever antenna I currently have selected, no matter which bands I'm scanning. So even if I told it I wanted to scan uh, 160 and 80 meters, if I have it in manual antenna mode, it'll just leave it on whatever antenna I have selected. So that way you can just pick your whatever favorite antenna you have, multiband antenna or whatever, and it will use that antenna as it scans the bands. One thing I want to point out, it's a mistake that's really easy to make and to go, oh, I'm going to go over to 40 meters and you click on this, your radio doesn't change, and you're wondering why. Well, it's because what you've done is you've enabled the scanner for 40 meters. If you actually want to go to 40 meters, you click like normal on your band selector. The lit up border around the button is so that when you're looking at the band scanner, you know which band you're on, even if it's on a screen that doesn't have a frequency display or something. Now the question is, what if I want to scan 160 meters, but I don't want it always stopping on that beacon? Well, what you do is you click on the LED that covers the 5 kilohertz segment that that beacon is in, and now it will never stop there. No matter where you set the threshold, no matter how, long, how strong the signal gets, it's going to skip that 5 kilohertz segment. Uh, <clears throat> you can disable as many segments as you want. Uh, if there was another beacon on, you know, 52 kilohertz above the bottom of the band, you could disable that segment also. Uh, if you've gone through and you've disabled a bunch of segments for some reason and then you want to uh, re-enable the whole band instead of having to go back and click on each one you can just click the clear button and it will disable it will re-enable all the segments on that band 
So if I want to enable the couple of bands to scan here, 160, the broadcast band for some reason, and 20 meters, let's say. So we start scanning. Here on 160, I told it to ignore that beacon, but I'll turn that off for now. Now it's switched to the broadcast band. Notice there's all these signals. I'll turn the threshold up a little bit so I don't stop on the weak ones. And here's a strong, very strong signal. Anyway, notice that it's staying on this signal because the signal is always stronger than the threshold. So it just stays there. Uh, if I put it in pause mode, then it's going to stay there for however long I have the delay set, in this case five seconds, and then it's going to move on. And now it found another signal on the broadcast band. It's going to stay there for five seconds, and then it's going to move on. It skipped this one because that one was weaker than my threshold. Notice that the light starts blinking when it's getting ready to move on. It will start blinking when there's about three seconds left before it moves. Now I've moved to the 20 meter band. Let me just stop it for a second. So now that's the basic functionality and a lot of the features that I've showed you. Now what I want to talk about is the program antenna mode. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this button. It alternates between enabling all the bands for scanning, which is probably not something you would ever want to do. Or if you click the button again, it will disable all bands. So I'm starting here with no bands enabled for scanning. Here on 20, I uh, want to be pointing kind of toward uh, Central Europe. So what I'm going to do is pick my best 20 meter antenna, uh, my three element Yagi. I'm going to point it this direction, OK? And I want to, uh, whenever it goes to 20 meters with the scanner, I want it to use this antenna. So I set my antenna, I set my azimuth, and then I enable the band for scanning, and I tell it I want to use programmed antenna mode. Now we go to 160 meters. Here on 160, I want to use my cardioid, and I know that signals I'm likely to hear are probably in the United States. So I live on the west coast of the United States, so I'm going to point the cardioid uh, east. And then I'm going to now enable the 160 meter band. So basically when you click on the band to enable it, it captures, it remembers what antenna you have and what azimuth you have. And, as long, and then when you go to program mode, it uses that antenna and that azimuth when it scans. So if we start scanning here on 160 meters, it's using the cardioid at 90 degrees. Now it goes to 20 meters. It switches to the three element Yagi at 342 degrees. Notice that it automatically switched. And that's one reason you want to scan the band more than once is because it takes a while for the rotor to rotate, takes a while for the antenna to change, and you want to give that time to happen before it gives up on that band and moves to the next one. So you might even want to scan the band three times, let's say. So I think that's about it. You get the idea. Showed you all the features. Um, it's simple to use if you just want to enable a couple of bands and tell it to scan, but it's got a lot of features if you want to pick your antenna and change how many times it scans and whether or not it stays there and how long and how strong the signals have to be and so on. So there you go. That's the band scanner and uh, that's everything you would need to know, I think, to use it or test it.